That game? That game? Let me just tell you something. This ain't root beer. This ain't root beer, bro. What the hell is up, guys? My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back. As always, hit that subscribe button if you like talking Philly sports every day because that's what I do. Listen, the first thing I want to say is Sixers fans, chill the hell out. Seriously, man. All I see all game long on Twitter and Facebook, and maybe I need to get off of Twitter and Facebook, man. Maybe I really need to. All I see all game long is the negatives, man. Oh, my God, this play. Oh, my God, that play. Oh, my God, that was horrible. This, 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 and this. And then the end result comes out, and it doesn't look as bad as you guys made it sound. Every NBA team struggles. Every NBA team has games where they get close to somebody they shouldn't be close to. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, this is how I felt this entire game against the Cavaliers. There's a lot of subliminal messages in that photo. All right, listen, man. We got Ben Simmons back. Um, the game, Like I said, the game's different with Ben Simmons, man. It's different. Our defense is different. Our hustle is different. Our effort is different. I'm telling you, this guy brings something to this team that is not there when he's gone. And say what you want about his damn jump shot. Tired of hearing about it, especially in this game, because there was the Cavs were actually playing kind of out on him. I mean, it, there wasn't really situations where you would have said, yo, Ben, you got, I mean, it's not like they were guarding him with Tristan Thompson. You know what I mean? That's what the Suns did, but Embiid wasn't in that game. Listen, Ben brings energy hustle, just an overall camaraderie, everybody plays harder around him, I love the guy, do I wish he would shoot the ball, yes, does he change the game for the better, even without shooting the ball, yes, now he had 10 points in the first half, and then he only had 5 in the second, um, but and he had a lot he had a couple bad turnovers too especially down the stretch and you know but that's going to happen man you know uh it wasn't a great game for him but it's better than not having him out there will he ever shoot a 3 will ben simmons ever shoot a 3 i don't know i can't answer that at this point it doesn't seem like it <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it man Brett was talking about getting running plays to get Ben in the corner. In the in the offseason, Brett was talking about running plays to get Ben three-point shots in the corner. We haven't seen it yet at all. It's not the fact that he's not shooting it. It's the fact that there's no effort to even like persuade him to shoot it from the coaching staff. There's no effort to even set up a play for him to get an open one to shoot. If you want somebody to be confident shooting, you have to get him to shoot the ball. How long is Brett Brown going to go coaching his team without saying, Ben, shoot the ball? How long is he going to get? How long is Brett going to allow this kind of stuff? But also, he's never run a play to get Ben Simmons open on a corner three, and he's not, he hasn't run it yet. We got Tristan Thompson over here shooting threes and going, throwing signs like he's. The seven-foot Steph Curry. Come on, Tristan Thompson. You're a joke. You are a joke. Who the hell celebrates shooting a three-pointer in the second quarter? Even when Ben shot the three in preseason, everybody celebrated, but he didn't celebrate. He wasn't going to stand there and go like this because he's like, yeah, I shot a three, dude, and I made it. Oh, well, that's uh, NBA players are supposed to be able to do that. Tristan Thompson is out here throwing up three-point signs when he hits a three. Get the hell out of here. Oh, my God. What a douche. Listen. Tobias Harris and Josh Richardson combined three-point shooting tonight was way... Wait for it. I almost can't even get this out of my mouth without vomiting. One for 19. They were one for 19. And... I will have you shout out to Philly Sports Fanatic uh, on Twitter, and he has a YouTube page too. Look up Philly Sports Fanatic. Right when I tweeted 
isn't Josh Richardson supposed to be a good three-point shooter? He hit that one to end the third quarter. And Philly Sports Fanatic replied to my tweet and, you know, all that. But that was the only, the only one he hit. And that says a lot about my luck. As soon as I talk trash on somebody, this is what happens. The only one he hit in the game was right after I tweeted, isn't, to, isn't Josh Richardson supposed to be a good three-point shooter? And he hits that one, that one pull-up at the end of the third quarter. Dude, one for 19 with these two guys. Tobias Harris can't buy one. It is unreal right now. I mean, as a as a shooter my whole life I've been there, but I'm also not an NBA player. I I would think that, you know, I mean, nobody kept statistics on me playing on the playground my whole life, but I'm pretty sure I prob I'm probably like a 25% shooter. You know what I mean? I'm not an NBA player. These guys are supposed to be 40% shooters. And he, Tobias went over 11. Over oh, 11. That's Robert Covington numbers. Except Covington plays better defense. Oh my god. Did I just compliment Robert Covington? Is this where I'm at right now? Oh man. I said I thought I was going to make a calm video. I was actually pretty calm watching the game and I was like I'm going to make a pretty calm video, but as soon as I start talking about it, my I can't do it. It's unbelievable what's happening. It's like people come to the Sixers and forget how to shoot, man. Whether we trade for them, whether they come here in free agency, or whether we trade up to draft them. they they It's like they come here and <laughs> their shooting talent just <laughs> disappears. And Markel Fultz forgot how to shoot forever because we drafted him. He was a baller in college. We drafted him, forgot how to play basketball. I mean, now he's playing basketball, but he's not shooting like he was in college, and he never will because the Sixers traded up to draft him. There's something about this city, man. It's a insane black cloud. <sighs> but we have enough talent on this team to pull out wins like this, but good Lord. Listen, Josh Richardson shoots like Lonzo Ball, man. His, his shot, I don't remember him shooting that goofy in Miami. Now, granted, I didn't watch Miami games, but I watched highlights. I watched Josh. I watched uh, Josh Richardson highlights when he came over in the Jimmy Butler deal. I I remember seeing him light it up a little bit in Miami, just seeing like Sports Center or NBA TV highlights or whatever. Josh Richardson was a shooter. I actually had the perception of him being the shooter on the team, the young shooter. And now he comes here, and his shot's all over here, this, over here like this, shooting from the side of his head like Lonzo Ball. Actually, Lonzo changed his shot now. He, it's like Lonzo gave his old form to Josh Richardson. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. This stuff is, there's stuff that happens in this city when it comes to sports that is not explainable. Is explainable a word? Not able to be explained. Ah, We're going to lead the league in turnovers again. And it's like, how many years do you lead the league in turnovers and not start looking at the coach? How many years? Now, I will say that one of the main reasons we have a lot of turnovers is because we have the ball in the hands of a, of a seven foot two. 260 pound man who's not a ball handler and you're going to get some turnovers like that man and Bede's always going to have some turnovers he's stop you guys need to stop wishing for this like oh and Bede needs to fix his turnover problem and Bede needs to fix this and fix that guys he is what he is at this point and guess what he's one of the best centers in the NBA He's just, this is what you're going to have to live with, with Joel Embiid. That's Sixers fans' problems. We think everything is supposed to be perfect all the time. There's positives and negatives. We're going to have to live with Embiid the way that he is. He made some good passes tonight. But he'll have a game in a couple days where he throws some dumb ones, dumb turnovers. He threw some dumb turnovers tonight. It's just Joel Embiid. We got to live with it, man. But what you do get is you get 26 points, 16 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 blocks. So stop it. 
Stop talking the mess about Joel Embiid, man. You, do you guys remember what it's like when we had guys like Spencer Halls on the team? Come on, man. We're spoiled now. We want everything to be perfect. We think if we don't team blow a team out by 40 points, it's a failure. Like, oh, we should we should have came into this this season just blowing everybody out like the 2016 Warriors. We're not that. It's not going to be pretty all the time. It's about that win column and that loss column, and it's about the playoffs. All right? We are 7-3. Seven and 7-3, three. Seven and, three, and I hear fans talking as if we're 3-7, and seven, as if we're 0-10. Oh Stop it. It's not going to be perfect. Um, Mike Scott in the offseason said he was going to get in the, in the post a lot more this season like he used to in his younger days. And I like what he did in this game, man. He took Del Vadova one-on-one at one point uh, when we needed a big bucket, took him right to the rim. He had a lot of plays down in the post, like being aggressive and looking to score. I like that a lot. I didn't see that from from Mike Scott last year. Last year, Mike Scott was mainly like a catch and shoot guy in the corner and and didn't like really do too much else to try to score. But I really really like that from from Mike Scott, man. And plus, man, it's Mike Scott, dude. He's awesome. He's he's amazing. Like he's great, dude. Who nobody hates Mike Scott. Mike Scott got in a fight in an Eagles at an Eagles game wearing a Redskins jersey, and we hated the people who fought Mike Scott. That's how much we love Mike Scott. What do you guys think about Embiid's flagrant foul? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that was a flagrant foul, or do you think that's just a hard foul in the NBA? Now, obviously, the uh, Allah and Mark Zumoff thought it wasn't a flagrant foul. I thought it was, personally, because, yeah, he didn't intentionally hit him in the head, but he took a big swing down and hit him in the face. And... Yeah, I mean, you got to know that you just can't do that. If you take a big swing, even if you're swinging at the ball, if you take a big over-the-top swing down, a chop down, and hit someone in the face, you're getting a flagrant foul, bro. That's not... People are on Twitter like, I can't believe it. How is that a flagrant foul? Are you serious? Come on, man. You guys know that was a flagrant foul. You know it was. When it came down to crunch time, Brett Brown... Drew up a game-winning play for Joel Embiid. Now listen, there was a game, I don't remember who it was against a couple weeks ago, earlier in the season, game two, three, or four, whatever. Brett drew up a game-winning play for Embiid, and it won the game. Against Denver, Brett drew up a game-winning play for Embiid, and the refs blew it! That won the game. If they didn't call a BS offensive foul with Jokic grabbing his jersey and throwing himself on the floor like the big tubular that he is. Um, and he draws up a game-winning play for Embiid in this game. And it was perfect. Like, I didn't know what was happening at first. I see Josh Richardson with the ball. Embiid sets a screen. He rolls. Tobias comes up, gets the ball. Another screen and roll. Dumps it under to Embiid. And he's wide open under the basket. That's a perfect play. It's what we should have been doing last year every time we were in a one-point game. Give the ball to Joel Embiid. He can't be stopped in the post. But we were forcing the ball to J.J. Redick on the dribble handoffs seven damn times in a row. The game against the Toronto Raptors was tied 90-90. And Brett Brown was running J.J. Redick dribble handoffs. Instead of forcing the ball to Embiid in the post. So it took three years for him to listen to us and say, Oh yeah, maybe when we're in a close game, I should give the ball to Joel Embiid in the post. But he finally did it. And then it's just great that Embiid's hustle wins the game at the end. Now Kevin Love got a wide open three. Okay? And he should have made that. And if he would have made that... Uh, I don't know, man. But he didn't. He missed it. Thank the basketball gods. They gave us one of them. He missed it. Joel Embiid runs and dives over top of Tristan Thompson to keep the ball alive so the clock can run out. Embiid had a couple plays where he dove on the floor, put his body on the floor for the ball. I don't want to hear you guys with this Embiid's lazy 
with this and beads out of shape stuff, man. You guys say this in like the second quarter. You say this like three plays into the game. You got to just relax, man. And Bede won the game with a dunk and won the game with his hustle. Joel Embiid is the prize possession in this town. And that's all we needed to finish this thing off against the Cavs. Should the game have been this close? Absolutely not. But with Josh Richardson and Tobias Harris shooting one for 19 from three, and we still won the game, I'll say that's that's a pretty good win. I'll say that's a pretty good win. You guys let me know what you think in the comments, man. Give me all your opinions about this game. If you're more angry than I am, let me know. I think a win is a win, and a win in the NBA when shooting like that from three-point range is still a win. Let me know what you think in the comments. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back. Peace! <laughs>